Hi, people. Um, so I broke my finger, and so I can't really do much in terms of editing. So still wanted to get the podcast out to you this week, although late. So you're just going to see the whole thing with no title screens, no nothing, just totally unedited. I'll do my best to get random banter out of the front end of it, but it's hard to edit because I have to be able to click and drag and yeah. So enjoy. Okay. Let me get a sock. I think I'm ready. You ready? Yep. I'm ready. Let me just quick turn this light on though, because the sun is setting, so it's going to get dark. Okay. One, two, three. Hi. Welcome to Knitting My Shit Together, a knitting and fiber arts podcast where neurodivergence and yarn collide. My name is Farah. I use she, her pronouns. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and you can find me on Instagram at Tomboy Femme Bags, I almost forgot, and on Ravelry at Farah Knits. Um, and this is episode 33. Boom. Y'all, Farah has obviously been doing this for too long with me now since me forgetting my usernames is a thing and now Farah is doing it. It's like contagious. Transferring the love. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Annika. I use they, them pronouns. I'm in Moses Lake, Washington. Um, you can find me online on Instagram at T-Fueled Living and on Ravelry at Threadcatcher. And you can find both of us on Instagram um, at Knitting My Shit Together, where we post podcast related things and just life things. Mm -hmm. And um, also, we have a Ravelry group, um, which I think the link to is in the description box below. It is. Um, before we get started with news and updates, we need to take this moment to say hi to our favorite fan and viewer, Arissa. So, hi, Arissa. We love hi, you. Hi, Arissa. We love you. Okay. Um, so, news, goings on. Um, okay, one thing, let's talk about patches because that needs to be addressed. Yes. So, we made... Well, we had patches and merit badges designed, and we're going to have a pre-order um, that has been open for a few months now, and um, we're going to place the order in January. But only one person outside of me and Annika has placed an order. So this is what we're wondering, a couple things. One thing I'm wondering is if maybe you all in our heads, we thought patches were a good idea, but you all don't really think you would use them or think they're a good idea, which is totally fine and legit. And if you would prefer enamel pins, because before I send in the patches for order, you know, we could just as easily do enamel pins. So um, if you would give us feedback um, by commenting here or DMing us um, on Instagram, or posting in Ravelry, that would be fantastic. And for the person who has already ordered, um, don't worry. If we do switch to pins, we will transfer your money to that. Um, so let us know, because I really want to get the order placed by the end of January. By the 15th, actually, I'd like to get it placed. Um, so if you could all let me know what the dizzle is so that we can do something. What? <laughs> Are you laughing that I said dizzle? Of all of the things you could have said. Want to hear a really bad joke? Uh, always. <laughs> what does Snoop Dogg, why does Snoop Dogg use an umbrella? Why? Faux oh, drizzle. <laughs> when I taught yoga, I would tell bad jokes when we were planking, 
we would do a planking session every t class I did and we would like hold plank for like a minute or so and while we were doing it I would tell bad jokes to make people laugh that's terrible because then you're making them contract while they're trying to hold their core together I know but I was trying to distract from the fact that we're planking for a minute mm. okay um so let us know give us feedback also um we have um we are hosting a cal um in honor owls currently yeah i know what i was going to talk about the first one in honor of our friend sultan who released a design the sago cycad hat that is awesome there's a cal going on right now um you can find that by looking up the hashtag Sago Sci Cad Hat Cal. And also there is, um, we have a posting about it on our grid and Instagram. So you can find stuff there. And to join, you just like literally get a skinny fingering weight yarn. Get the pattern. Um, also, if you need pattern support or yarn support and you want to participate in this cow, um, feel free to DM us either at the podcast page or you can DM me um, because we have some wonderful dyers um, who were like, if you need yarn support, we can help. So, yeah. Um, also, Annika, let's, we were going to talk about doing a giveaway for the Cover Your Ass Cal. We are also hosting our own Cal, the Cover Your Ass Cal, um, which is... Um, if the official pattern is Elizabeth Zimmerman's nether garments, which is a recipe and is size inclusive. Um, we also will are happy to help with math, um, pattern support, yarn support for that as well. So reach out. Um, it's running until March 31st. So you have time people to do this. Um, and I would like to, I want it, weren't we going to do a giveaway this week? I can go grab one of the prizes right now. Oh, that's great. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Well, so while I do that, think about what we're going to do, like what people have to do to get entered into the giveaway for this. I mean, personally, I think we should do like a rock, paper, scissors thing. I think that'd be really awesome to just have like this giant, like rock, paper, scissors tournament. Um, I mean, I understand that that's not really feasible with everyone living across the globe. But if for some wonderful miracle chance we're all able to get together, I think it'd be super cool to do like a giant rock, paper, scissors tournament and then have prizes for that because like, awesome. How about a skein of yarn for our giveaway? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Ooh, that looks like my colors. I know it is your colors. I, when I pulled it, I'm like, Annika my colors will like this yarn. This is all kinds of speckly goodness. This is a skein of Lorna's laces. This is the colorway is splatter shot. Is and it's called Cozumel. And this is the soulmate, which is really cool. This is what I'm knitting my nether garments out of. It has um, Outlast Viscose in it, which is made. Um, it's, it's like a fiber that's put in performance gear to make it last longer and breathe. And so, yeah, it's fingering weight. There is 425 yards in this for 100 grams. And this will be a prize for our giveaway. To enter the giveaway, you should... Do we want to do it for a new person who casts on in the month of January? Yeah. Okay. So to win this, you have had to have cast on in the month of January. And we will do the drawing for this in like on the 31st, maybe. Okay. Okay. So um, that will be that. So if you were thinking about joining the the knit along, like there's pretty good incentive, I think, to do it now. Yeah. And you can win this skein of yarn. And what you have to do is post, use the hashtag cover your ass cal, 
And then also do hashtag cover your ass cal newbie. <laughs> and put it on Instagram. That works, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. And I'll put, when I edit, I'll put the hashtags down in here. So that's how you can win the stain of Lorna's Laces, which we will draw for on January 31st. Let me put that in my calendar so I remember. Thank you. So we both remember? Yeah, so one of us remembers. We, Farrah and I figured out that she's the ideas person and I'm the scheduler person who makes sure that those things actually like. Annika's happen. logistics. I'm logistics. They're so yeah. good at it too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Wait, where am I? Oh, here we go. Okay. I forgot what month it was. Y'all, I'm so tired. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Cool. Okay, it's in okay. my planner. We're good. Do we have any other news or updates, Annika? Talked about both of the cows. I don't, and we talked about the patches. I don't think we do. Oh, what about our Patreon? We have a Patreon page um, and the link to that is in the description box below too. And um, you can become a patron and qualify. We do tons of patron giveaways. We did two patron giveaways in the month of December. Um, you will also, we also post extra content and Patreon that people see. Um, and there's going to be plenty of it during the month of January because Annika is coming here for my birthday. Um, and we are going to be doing extra content for the patron page. And, um, yeah, it'll be good stuff. So, um, if you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month or as much as you want, like if you want to give a million dollars, you can. We're cool with that. Yeah. There will be a lot of more international travel and yarn trips if that were to happen. <laughs> we would go on location to different places. Amazing. It yeah. would be. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, hit us up on Patreon. Um, if you like us and want to support what we're doing here and help us do more of it and like do more giveaways and just fun stuff, that's how we do it. So yeah. How many giveaways have we had for patrons? We've only had a patron page for, like four months, maybe, if that. No, not even that. And we've done I, like, I want to say close to, we've done like, like five or six at this point, I think. Yeah. We yeah, the, I think like five or six. We did the peacock, we gave away a stitch marker, a pay for your peacock stitch marker. We did a beginner drop spindle kit. We did yarn. We did yarn. Right? Which yarn did we do? I don't remember. I think it was some Lorna's laces that you had in your stash. <gasps> Hamilton! <laughs> yeah, this is Hamilton, my cat. One of my cats. The cat who kind of worships me. I love him. He's a dude bro. He's totally a dude bro. That part is he's not a himbo, but he is a dude bro. So, but that's okay. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. Check out our patron links in the description box. Anything else? Um, thank you to everyone who joined whoop, uh, our stitch group um, for my birthday and sent me birthday messages and wrote nice things in our comments about me for my birthday. Like I am so thankful for all of you and for all of the nice and kind things you all said um i the person who has a crying playlist to make myself cry um needed no help from the crying playlist because all of your nice comments made me cry by themselves so in a good you. way a good cry in a good way they were happy tears they were like happy i'm loved tears not 
sad tears. Yeah. But thank you. I really appreciated all of them. So. Okay. Moving on. FOs. Annika, do you have FOs you can share? I have one FO I can share. I'd have more FOs, but the patterns that I tested have not been released yet. And I have not been given permission to share them. Um, but the pa- the FO that I can share is, like, the most Annika socks ever, I think. They are. Um, like, I just... Oh, my nose is so itchy. Sorry. Uh, the most Annika socks ever. They're blue. Like, they're, they're my shaded turquoise blue. And then there's rainbow speckle stripes. And then bright neon green toes and heels and isn't that like, neon green that's the mini I gave you right it's the mini that you gave me yeah so the blue yarn was a gift yarn from Yelly she saw an ad for it went that is Annika in a skein of yarn they have to have it and then surprise sent it to me and then the lime green mini um was from Farah and who's yeah, the dyer it, of the yarn Annika or I mean Yelly got you um, I don't remember. I know any- the mini I got you was uh, Forest Fiber Arts. Oh, really? Nikki dyed something this neon? It was a mini for one of the sock sets. I, like, absolutely love this neon. Like, oh, so good. Um, I don't remember the dyer for the yarn that Yelly sent and the person wasn't on Instagram, which we all thought was weird when I got the yarn. Um, so yeah. And since we don't know if she's a problematic dyer or not, like I don't feel terrible about not sharing about all of that. Um, but yeah, the yarn was amazing. These socks also, We're started on um, New Year's Day at midnight. And because our friend Sultan, who is Fun Noma Diddy Co., and he's like amazing pattern writer, um, also the pattern writer of the Sago Psychad hat and socks, um, he says he's not competitive. And then likes to start competitions in our friend group, which I think is hilarious. So on New Year's Eve, he's like, why don't we have a competition to see who can knit a pair of socks the fastest? And um, our friend Kat, who is sock on wood, I think it's hilarious, uh, knit a pair of socks in under 36 hours, which is just like, (sighs) Um, but these took me three days. So, yes. And they're lovely. She obviously won, like, amazing fair and square and, like, totally deserved it. But these took me three days and are my New Year's socks. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Cool. Any other FOs? Not that I can share. Okay. What about you? Do you have any FOs? You know, I thought I, I do have one I can share. I have some spinning. Mm-hmm. FOs and oh I do have another FO but I can't show a picture because it's blocking but I can't like show it otherwise I would wear it but I'm gonna put a picture of me wearing it and insert it in here when I talk about it so hold on first let me grab my spinning I forgot about this spinning FO we're obviously a bit out of practice uh, for recording the podcast The holidays got us. Did I show the huckleberry knits that I finished spinning yet? I don't think so. I'll grab that too. And I mean, if you did, then people can definitely see it twice because it's that pretty. So, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Um, Let's see. I have these two spinning FOs that I can share, and then I'll talk about my knitting FO in a sec. So this is Huckleberry Knits. This was 85 pull worth. 
15 silk. And um, this is the colorway North Cascades. I did it two ply. And this is going to go to Annika. And yeah, it's so pretty. I love it. Um, I got fingering weight. I got 480 yards in 109 grams. And so that is that. Then this was lovely. I love this. So this color is from Hopkins Fiber Studio, who is one of my favorite fiber dyers. Um, like Amoni, the dyer there, has my number, I'm telling you. Like all the good things. And this is 100% Ramboulet. And um, it was a one of a kind colorway called Down the Rabbit Hole. <laughs> and I, it's two ply. I got fingering weight on this too. I can't remember. I got like 400 and something yards. I have it written down somewhere, but yeah. Look at that goodness. And this I'm so going to keep for me. So those are my spinning FOs. I also, I, you know, I've been doing a lot, of, quite a bit of making because I took a vacation um, for December. And so I got a lot of spinning done, got a lot of knitting done. Um, it's going well. The other thing I can't share, um, my other FO, and I will put a picture of this here quick. Ah, insert picture. Um, this is my Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system, the EPS raglan I did. It's a bottom-up raglan, um, and I finished it yesterday, which was amazing, and it's blocking right now. Um, blocking fixes everything. There wasn't anything that needed to be fixed, but you know the stitches lay all wonky and whatnot until you block it. Um, so I'm really happy, and I'm fairly certain that once it's done, I probably will wear it a lot until I finish another sweater I'm working on. So, yes. Um, this yarn I knitted up is um, Retrosaria Rosa Pomar. It's the Mondium base, which is 100% Portuguese wool, and it is in a fingering weight. And I just am really... And it's not super wash. Non superwash, which is my jam. I am really into non superwash wools lately. I just don't, yeah. Superwash has too much drape for me. I would also like people to know that while I may be like a sock maker enabler or bully people into start making socks, um, Farah would be the person who has currently in our growing friend group um, been getting other people to knit and try uh, non-superwash wool, and I think it's really, really funny. Well, okay, let's be honest. It has an environmental impact. It does. We're all posting about how Australia is burning. <laughs> and all these things, but then we knit everything in superwash wool, which just adds an unnecessary chemical to the process. Like I get preparing wool and fiber takes resources. I get that. But like, why are, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I do understand that superwash wool has a purpose. Like all of my socks will be done in superwash, you know, because they will. But, <laughs> and I get like, if I was knitting something for a kid, or maybe somebody uh, has a disability that makes it so that, like, eating is difficult and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And they get stuff stained a lot. Like, that happened to me after I had surgery once. You know what I mean? Like, had I been a knitter then, I would not wear handmaids at that point that weren't super washed. Yeah. <laughs> I After brain surgery and even after... I was in the hospital and like going through like drastic medication changes and like my motor skill function 
dropped significantly. Like I didn't wear anything that wasn't acrylic because if I, if my partner at the time couldn't stick it through the washer and dryer, like it was just going to be destroyed. So. And I, I was Nikki of Forest Fiber Arts and I were talking about this because she's in the same place and she is now offering non superwash bases, which is awesome. Um, and she and I have a Targi base. Huh? Including one that's a Targi base. I know, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> because what we were talking about is this. We think for us it came from learning to spin. We both began spinning on our wheels at about the same time. <coughs> and when you start spinning, you get to use all these other fibers from different sheep. Yeah. And you see how amazing they are. And then you start asking, like, how has Superwash Merino <coughs> become the fiber of choice? Like, there are other amazing, amazing bases. Targi, Polworth, BFL. Corridale. I mean, even Corridale. Yeah, like, Corridale. Polworth is personally my favorite for, like, I'd say 99% of things, like, I will choose Polworth over other sheep breeds. Yeah. Also because, like, Polworth are honestly, like, kind of, I think, one of the cutest sheep breeds, in case anyone wants to know. Like, I love all sheep. But, like, Romney and Polworth just, like, kind of have my heart, so. Yeah. Romney's another one. I mean, <coughs> so, I would just have you consider that, like, before you buy Superwash, to ask yourself, do I really need superwash for what I'm knitting? And I might start an Instagram highlight of non-superwash dyers and yarns um, that I like. Sometimes they can be a little bit toothier, but how they are <coughs> is they're toothy, but not itchy necessarily. Or not scratchy. I don't know what's up. They're like a little bit toothy, but not necessarily scratchy or itchy. Um, and many of them soften up once you sew them, them, wash them. Yeah. So that's what I'll say about that. That's my rant about non super wash yarns. Okay. That's it for FOs, I think. Whips. Um, Annika, what it whips do you have? Um, I, I have two me. whips that I'm working on recently. Um, I started this sweater yesterday. Um, and so I'm knitting an EPS sweater and so beautiful. Like, is anyone surprised that I chose a rainbow yarn? I mean, no. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Lion Brand Ferris Wheel in the Sprinkles colorway. It's like this really pretty and marled. And it's single ply but marled. Yeah, it's single ply but marled. Um, it's acrylic. You get 270 yards of like a worsted weight yarn. And it was only like... 350 per cake which is really exciting um so totally in my budget um so yeah so this is turning out really pretty i cast this on yesterday i like it i have knit from this white marker woo, to <coughs> the to where i am now which is about like two and a half inches or so so i mean which is not it doesn't seem like a lot but I currently have 270 stitches of my sweater on these needles. So, like, it's I'm pretty proud of those two and a half inches. Um, and then the other, the other whip that I have is that I found the bag that my, whoo, my uh, lovingly dubbed Lisa Frank socks were in. And I had only completed the body of one sock and had never started the second. And so um, yesterday I cast on, yesterday I cast on um, the second sock and 
I got that much of it done. So I have like four-ish more inches to knit of the sock and then the uh, um, and then I can put in the heels. Um, the really cool spoon stitch marker that I'm using for Progress Keeper is from um, our friend Kat uh, Sock on Wood um, Etsy shop. And she has a whole bunch of really cool um, stitch marker and, like, yarn chicken earrings and, like, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And so. she just did a shop update today. So yeah. you should go check it out before everything sells out. Yes. So the yarn that I'm using is, um, is hold on. I have it right here. Here we go. Okay, so the yarn that I'm using is Monostel de Uruguay Alegria in the Locura Fluoro, or Fluor. It's really funny, every single skein of this that I've seen has had the last word spelled differently, and I don't know why. But uh, yeah, it works up really fun and bright and neon, so, which I mean like, once again, neon rainbow socks, is anyone really surprised? So, yeah. And I'm doing the toe-up vanilla sock method. Um, these are on size twos because that's what I knit the other sock in. But I've been using size ones for most of my socks lately. So that's it. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, any other whips? No, just those two. Those are the only ones that I've worked on recently. Okay. I have more than that. Sweet. You know. So the first, this... I'll talk about this. This is the second sock. Um, I'm knitting a pair of socks for my partner, Matthew. This is Knit in Holstgarn Highland. And it is the Highland sock. And it's um, like a gray, charcoal gray and cream marled two-ply. And I like it. Um, the only bad thing that I've discovered is... If you're going to ever knit a sock with marled yarn, don't do it with an afterthought heel because I just cannot pick up the row. The stitches for the afterthought heel. I don't know what I keep going. Yeah, it's just really hard. It all blends together. So I don't know if I'll finish this second sock by the end of the, or finish the pair by the end of the month. I'll finish this. But then I'm going to see if Annika will put in my heels for me. At least pick up the stitches when they're here um, for my birthday. <laughs> because I've tried like five times. I probably won't quit trying. But if they're not, the heels aren't picked up by the time Annika's here, then I'll see if they can do it. And if not, then I'll... It's exactly from, huh? or I guess today when this aired. Yeah. It's two weeks exactly from tomorrow. Ooh. I, I can't believe it. It's getting so fast. I know it is. I'm really excited. So, yeah. That's that. Um, then, let's see. What else do I have on the needles? I have a project I can't show you because it's a test knit um, that I'm almost to the halfway point on um, mm -hmm. that I've been spending time on. I also did a lot of work on my vacation for my lion-hearted swan show, which I'll show you. I finished the color work section of the yoke. And so now I just have to knit like 24 more rows before I separate for sleeves. And then I'll really have a lot of this done. So, you know, I'm going to get this. This will be the next garment. Now that I finished the EPS sweater, this will be the garment that I kind of focus on um, after I get the test knit done and before I cast on more garments. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it for my whips. Yeah, I actually looked in my Ravelry queue last night when I updated the EPS sweater and put it as finished. And I was like, I only have four things on the needles right now. 
theoretically, I could cast something on. Totally. I'm not going to. I'm going to wait just a little bit more because I really want to. I think my reward for the finishing the test knit will be not only the cool thing I'm knitting, but also um, I will cast on a few more things that I have in mind. So, yeah, that's that. That's Please. it for whips. Okay. Time for the mental health moment. Mm -hmm. Mental health moment. This week's mental health moment is about silence. What letter and what number is it brought to you by today? It's brought to you by the letter S and the number... Is the letter S for shh? The letter S for shh. And the number... 850, which is the number of times I want to say that out loud to people in the last two weeks. Um, I was going to start singing the sound of silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Huh? <laughs> The vision softly creeping, left its seeds while I was sleeping. I love Simon and Garfunkel. I like, too. I've heard Paul Simon is really douchey in real life, though. Yeah, that's what I've heard, too. Yeah, which is unfortunate. You know he was married to Edie Burkell. Of no, Edie I did Edie Burkell and the New Bohemians. Yeah. They've been married for a couple decades, but apparently the cops got called to their house. For domestic violence. Whoa. I'm like, not cool, Paul Simon. Not cool. Don't beat your spouses, people. Just don't. Find other healthy outlets for your emotions. And I don't know what happened. I guess, I don't think anyone was hauled away. But I'm just like, really? It's Paul Simon and Edie Burkell. Like, I expect more from you people. I don't know why, but it's silly. I know nothing about them. <laughs> okay. So anyway, okay. Before I was hospitalized last October, a year ago, this past October, um, I was really social, like all the time social. I think when my mental health started getting bad, I retreated more and more. And so my expectation was that once I got well, I'm using that in air quotes, once I was in recovery, that suddenly I would be uber social again, that like that was a sign that I was well or something, I don't know, and that I would be really social again. And that has not happened at all. It's different, I'll say this, because it's not like withdrawing out of anxiety. It's more, I just really value and love alone time now. <laughs> and I like quiet. And it's very strange. Um, and I think what I've come to the conclusion of is that maybe the excessive socialization before was like a coping mechanism I was using, like a not healthy coping mechanism to where if I just keep myself distracted enough with other people and being out and busy, then I don't have to like deal with my shit. Um, so it's not like out of anxiety anymore. And it's been hard for me in a way to adjust to it because I've never been this way <laughs> before. And so I don't know what to think. I've asked like, like literally now, if I look up the definition of an introvert, of the thing where like being with people drains energy from you, like that is totally what happens. And so I was like, did I turn into an introvert? Or was I always an introvert in denial, not in touch with myself? Or am I an ambivert? But I don't think I'm an ambivert. 
I don't know. I don't think you are either, personally. Do you think I'm an introvert now? I think you're an introvert who has healthy coping mechanisms now that doesn't need to use people and their problems to um, not pay attention to your own. Yeah. And now I feel like also, too, like, you have... resources and the skills to deal with the emotions that you feel in general and then also for like when they feel too big Mm -hmm. and yeah so what's been interesting is if you've come to any of the stitch groups in the last month like I think when I started doing the stitch groups hosting them initially like before Annika was co-hosting with me even. I was still in that like intense recovery process. I mean, I'm always going to be in recovery for my whole life. I'm always going to have to be skillful and be intentional about prioritizing my mental health. However, I was at a more intensive phase of recovery when I first started it because I had only been out of the hospital like five or six months at that point. And now I'm like, over a year out. Um, And I'd only been doing DBT for like four months to five months when I started it. And so I think I still needed that interaction with other people to distract myself to some extent at that phase. And so what's really strange is now I like, I mean, I'm hitting my social threshold before Annika is. I believe. Don't you? Yes. <laughs> Which is why, like, I've been, like, the ending host for, um, this, for the Stitch group, like, for the past, like, what, like, month or so? Yeah. And I'm just gonna be honest, I feel a level of guilt about that. But, I don't, I don't think you should, like. Yeah, but I'm also, like, Annika's a grown-ass human being who is also healthy and knows how to set boundaries. And if they didn't like it or it was bothering them or they couldn't one night, they would tell me. Yep. And, like, there's been a couple times in, like, the past two months where, like, you're like, I have to go. And I'm like, I also just cannot do this tonight. And then transferred, like, the hosting powers to, like, Sultan or whatever and gone to. Like, it's really just not... A big deal and like I rather you take care of your mental health in a way that keeps you healthy instead of like trying to power through it just so you don't have to like feel whatever level of guilt or whatever and I mean like I personally don't think you should be feeling guilty for that at all I don't anyway, feel guilty but... for being introverted I feel guilty for bailing on the group But I'm kind of getting over it. I'm learning to get over the guilt. Because, yeah, like, I can't help it. This is how I am apparently now. Which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. Like, our group is made up of a whole bunch of differently neurodivergent people and neurodivergent adjacent people. And, like, I, I... feel like we all get it like and we have people that will leave and come back when they feel more apt and ready to be part of the group again and like it's just really not a big deal yeah so it's just interesting it's a whole new phenomenon for me in case anyone wants to know I'm still decently extroverted I do have social anxiety, but I'm still decently extroverted. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, I'm perfectly content now to be in my studio and put on a record and just make things and be qui- and sit in quiet with some music and like that's very nice to me now, which is so interesting. 
Hmm. I think like part of that is like through all of the work that you've done to like work on emotional healing with yourself that like it's not scary to be by yourself anymore. Yeah, that's true as well. Oh my gosh, this is still in my head. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I'm like, does Annika know that that sock is still on their head? Nope. So, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? What should we say about this to our viewers? Like, um, have any of you experienced this shift? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I think the other thing, too, that needs to be addressed um, is that, like, silence can feel uncomfortable at first in group settings. But, like, for groups to grow and for, like, closer um, and for groups to grow deeper, that silence is a necessary thing. And it happens organically, and that's okay. Um, and I also, like, want to like totally say that like I 100% get how uncomfortable that silence can feel especially at first and learning how to deal and sit with that silence it used to be quiet. so uncomfortable to me yeah. yeah 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 and like there's nothing wrong with feeling uncomfortable personally with that silence like I get that some people's brains are just wired that way um and that's cool um but just realize that like other people need that silence and whatnot and, and that not having that silence can be overwhelming um and too much and I think too I would encourage people to explore the idea of connection in silence. That you can be and feel connection even in silence. So, like, there are times when me and Annika or me and Annika and Sultan are hanging out and knitting together. And it's just, like, quiet. For, like, 20 minutes straight, it'll just be silent. <laughs> and, like, none of us will have, like, our microphones, like, off or anything. Like, we do do the silent work. Which is intentional because, silence. Yeah. Yeah. That's intentional silence, which is also, like, fantastic. Yeah. But, but there will just be, like. Organic. The conversation or whatnot. And we'll just, like, be in the presence of each other. And it's just. I love it. Great. I love it. Like, like, it. Like, there doesn't always need to be words when we're together. And I really, really appreciate that. So. Yeah. So, that's it. Sounds of silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Now I'm going to have to listen to that. I love that song. I like, I like, um... Homeward Bound. I do too. The Boxer is also one of my Boxer's favorites. Good. Um, really funny story. So, I used to live in Los Angeles, and my family would take road trips down to Baja California, which is technically Mexico. It's like <laughs> over the border, um, which is arbitrary, but whatever. And it's all Mexico. And even California uh, is technically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As I said, it's arbitrary. And uh, they, uh, my aunt and uncle, we were in their truck and they had just gotten like Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hit CD. And we listened to it the whole entire way down. And I was like seven or eight at the time. And the song Cecilia, do you know that one by Simon and Garfunkel yeah. came on? And that one was my favorite. And so, like, my sister and my cousin and I learned all the lyrics, and we would just all, like, start singing it together, which is, like, looking back at it now, it's, like, really highly inappropriate for, like, 
pre-K and like early elementary aged kids. Um, if you haven't heard the song Cecilia by Simon and Garfunkel, I suggest looking it up because like the song is like honestly great, mm-hmm. like sound wise. Um, but the lyrics might not be considered child appropriate. Um, anyway, but yeah, that, that, that's still one of my favorite, like Simon and Garfunkel songs. And it's like, makes me giggle every time I hear it or think about it, honestly. So just piggybacking onto that one thing that annoys me is when people start complaining about modern music and being like music today, it's all so profane and vulgar. And I'm like, What are you talking about? Like, Blueberry Hill. (laughs) Listen to the lyrics. Like, there's so, like, yeah. I feel like this is one of those, like, moments where we need Sultan to say, I learned it from watching you. I know. We do. Yeah. So, leave comments. Join our patrons. Like and subscribe. Do all the things. Join us on Instagram on Wednesday and Friday when we do our lives. We do. And you can join us on Saturday for Stitch Group. And you can watch Farah slowly hit her limit and then be like, peace out, bitches. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Some weeks it happens more rapidly than others. Um... (laughs) Yeah, it's fun. It's a wild ride. Okay, Um, so thank you all. We really appreciate you all, and thanks for giving us a view. Have a good week.